News. That was a good remembering the greats out there. We've talked about this. We're in a we're in a transition period of some of our all time superstars are at the end of their careers, and as you said, it's been fun to kind of watch yeah. their entire journeys and be along with it. But let's start with the Lakers here because they took a gamble hiring JJ Redick as their head coach with no previous NBA coaching experience, and it's clear that LeBron has his new coaches back. But what about the rest of the team? Shaq said that he thinks getting the other players to buy in is going to be one of Reddick's toughest tests. For me as a player, <laughs> if I didn't respect the coach, it was easy for me to turn my 100% down. Let me explain. I'm going to give you 100 anyway. But if it's a situation where I know we're not going to go, 100 is hard to maintain. But when, my uh, question is, you have LeBron's respect. He's sticking up for you. What about the other guys? That, that That's going to be the test. I don't think I could play for a guy who I just played against four or five years ago. I don't, I don't think I can do it. I think the big tell is going to be how Anthony Davis feels about all of this, right? Because he's the number two on the team, the, quote, future of the team. And there were reports before the Lakers officially hired J.J. that he wasn't 100% in on the decision. But Shaq went on to share that he made that example of I, I go 100% with guys and coaches like Phil Jackson, but like one of the greatest coaches of our generation. He goes, you come in, you're going to get 100%. So, yeah, this is going to be one of the many uphill battles for J.J. Redick. He was just in the league a handful of years ago, right? So is he going to get that respect from the players of I can look at you as my head coach opposed to a peer? Another uphill battle is getting the Lakers back to a championship or bust team because that's the Lakers way. And then developing the LeBron and Bronny relationship on the court. So there's a lot of factors here, but I'm curious to hear from Anthony Davis. Like I think AD is going to be the big kind of help set the tone with LeBron for J.J. and the Lakers. That's a good point on A.D. I hadn't thought about that because A.D. wasn't at the press conference. I think LeBron was there when Bronny yeah. was there. Yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. A.D. will be at the Vegas camp right? Yeah. Uh, for USA Basketball, so maybe someone will ask him there. Probably. Um, I don't... I, I, I think AD, you're right, is probably the one to be not concerned, but curious. Yeah. Whereas the other guys are all like in their 20s. Don't and they listen to LeBron. Yeah. And, yeah. and they also probably watched JJ Redick when yes. they were like 12 years old. Yeah. Being an awesome shooter, one of the top shooters in the league for, yeah. I don't know, a decade. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about the young guards. No, it's going to be Anthony Davis. Yeah. But does yeah. Anthony Davis have the pull that Shaq did? And remember, the big knock on Shaq from Kobe, Alex, was that. Kobe was like, you, you're never in shape. You're never trying. Like, we, you could be the best player yeah, ever. They were both like two superstars who wanted to be the biggest superstar. Yeah. So they, they butt heads there. But this is LeBron and AD's team still, right? That's why they gave AD the big contract. So it's, is AD going to buy in as much as LeBron? And when and yeah. if he does, can he lead by example to all the other guys on the team? Yeah. Um, if you want to get really sinister, <laughs> not that I do. Um, AD wanted James Borrego, who didn't get a head coaching job because he knew him um, from prior years. What if the Lakers got Redick for like a good one or two years and they know AD's not going to love him and AD will want out and then they just press the entire reset button with no, no stars and start over and you move AD out? I mean, that's a little from sinister. what we've seen from the Lakers, they haven't had a coach since Phil Jackson last longer than three seasons. So mm. it's... I would predict J.J. Redick lasts longer than AD. Whoa. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I mean, how's AD going to age given his injuries history and just like, is he, is he at 35 going to be as good as he was last year? I, I don't think so. Like LeBron know. aging is fine. Yeah. I don't know that AD is going to age the way, like, look at some of these other centers. So Shaq at 35. Go look him up. So there's a, there's a lot of questions around the Lakers and a good chunk of them are centering around AD right now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. Let's move to the NFL where CJ Stroud made a statement in his rookie season, leading the Texans to a playoff victory. Star. Right team for the right time. Just go back one year. Joe Mazzula, the head coach, was young, looked like he was completely over his skis, got worked by Eric Spolster in the playoffs. Marcus Smart, why is he shooting so much? And you weren't quite sure, do we give Brown and Tatum extensions? And these guys aren't winning the title. They're just they're just good in the regular season. What, we don't know. Brad Stevens, the former coach, goes upstairs. And he says, Joe Mazzula needs help. 
He put really good guys on the staff. He said, you know what? We're a little bit too much Tatum dependent. Let's bring in Porzingis, Drew Holiday. Other scores take the pressure off. Let's give Jalen Brown an extension. Make one of our stars very happy. No, he's long-term guy. All of it equaled right team, right time. Their identity became more team over Tatum, collaborative basketball, very, very bizarrely deep roster in a time it's hard to do what they're doing. It is a cliche, but the Celtics became the ultimate we over me. It's nothing against Jason Tatum. He is an elegant talent, but year after year after year, we kept looking at him to provide the moment. And Brad Stevens, the guy upstairs who had coached him, recognized, let's put less pressure on him and provide more offensive artillery and let others flourish. I don't know if this is a great Celtic team. Everything worked. Who knows with the future? Porzingis has helped. He's going into surgery. Cross your fingers. Al Horford, Drew Holiday getting older. Will they be able to work a deal for Derek White? But right now, they deserve credit. All right, well, you guys were out last night watching fireworks. I was watching fireworks on the soccer field. Argentina, Ecuador, thrilling match in Copa America. And a very weird thing happened. So Ecuador scores in stoppage time to force PKs. And Lionel Messi first up. Everybody, obviously, oh, Messi, uh, penalty kick. It's a lock. And he hit the crossbar. If you're here watching on FS1, look at this. It was stunning. I, at first, I thought it went right in. I was like, wait a minute. He missed? It was one of those shocking moments, Messi. And at that point, Ecuador had the momentum. You're like, holy cow, is Argentina going to lose? They end up prevailing. But Messi missing the PK was pretty much the story of the game. And it's been a weird Copa for Messi. Obviously, the greatest player ever to play soccer in the history of the sport. He's, he's won everything known to man, okay? Well, he was incredible in that thrilling World Cup final uh, against France, a memorable game. Messi's the GOAT, okay? But he hasn't scored in Copa. He's a little dinged up. And listen, he just turned 37 years old. He's getting up there in age. It's not just Messi, though. Later today, you're gonna, you guys are going to watch Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal battle France in the Euros. And maybe this is Cristiano Ronaldo's final Euro, Euro tournament. Now, if you watch the last game they played in, in extra time, he missed a penalty kick and broke out in tears on the field. Again, Ronaldo and Messi, these are two humongous global stars missing in key spots. Now, they are late in their career, and it got me thinking. So, social media pretty much exploded. To, you know, it's tough to pin down the exact date, but somewhere in like the 2007, 8 to 2010 range, somewhere in there. You know, you go YouTube, really popped, Instagram, Twitter. Those were like, the big social media moments in about that, that 2008 to 2010 range. And who were the big time stars? Uh, Lionel Messi was emerging as a superstar. Cristiano Ronaldo, same deal. He was kind of a little more advanced at that stage. He's a couple years older than Messi. And then in the NBA, you had Steph Curry uh, with Davidson and then the Golden State Warriors. You had Kevin Durant and you had LeBron James. All these guys are around the same age, 35, 36 to 39. And they emerged just as social media was popping. They were the first iteration of social media stars. It was an immersive experience. LeBron turns Taco Tuesday into a thing. I know Taco, people had talked about Taco Tuesday before. LeBron was doing it every Tuesday and yelling, Taco Tuesday. And it became a thing. And you and your family, us kind of sort of sometimes, it was a deal. LeBron did that because we were along for the ride. Lionel Messi, I don't know if you guys know this. His dog is like followed around and photographed and a huge deal in Argentina. His dog, okay? Cristiano Ronaldo, every summer, he takes him and his hot wife and their kids, they go on a yacht somewhere in the Mediterranean, somewhere exotic and beautiful, and and he's living the dream. And you know, the photographers are capturing it. He's putting it on his IG. You feel like you're on vacation with the guy. You feel close to Ronaldo, And then you maybe see the hotel they're at, and you're like, ooh, let me follow that hotel in case one day when I'm a baller, I'll check it out, you know? I mean, Steph Curry, folks, you guys know I have kids at home. I talk about this on my podcast all the time. 
I, I, Steph Curry does some of the best, coolest, new age workouts I've ever seen. And I'm not gonna lie, as my son likes to say, no cap, 